三年前を思い出すなライザ<笑> Hi guys welcome back to Switch Up a big thanks to Koei Tecmo for the review copy If you enjoy the content, then consider sticking around. Remember, we give away a free Nintendo Switch game each and every month. Today, we're going to look at Atelier Riser 2 Lost Legends and the Secret Fairy, which is sequel to the first game, which was hugely successful on the Nintendo Switch. They've massively tweaked the gameplay in many areas, and I'm delighted to say I think Koei Tecmo might have finally cracked turn based slash real time combat in a JRPG in a way that makes it continuously fun. We'll go over Nintendo Switch performance in Doctor Handheld. And hopefully, by the end of the review, you'll know if they've managed to synthesize the perfect sequel. Well, let's find out. The story is set exactly three years after the events of the first game. Riza is initially approached for her expertise with the rare gemstone, which is entrusted to her to try and find its origins. She sets out to the royal capital to meet her old friends, who also want her help with various tasks. One of which, and the main focus of the game really, is the investigations of many of the ruins around the royal capital. I don't want to spoil too many of the details, but needless to say, it's a very engaging storyline, one that perhaps veers a little bit cliche. At times, but which is held up by a solid cast of characters who are incredibly likable but also very funny. There are a number of side missions and activities which are entirely optional, and through each one, I found myself really getting close to these characters. In terms of gameplay and control, then, Riser 2 builds upon the first game and thankfully doesn't just settle with, yeah, that was good, let's keep it the same. You control your character with the left stick, you can auto run by pressing the R button, and she can jump and gather. Later in the title, you'll unlock the mount ability, allowing you to summon this adorable looking beast upon which you can cruise around the world. Riser's Atelier will be based within the Royal City and is a fully fledged apartment simulator. You can include furniture, improve the items within it, and eventually unlock a little pet who you can feed and send out on little expeditions to get you rare and unique items. And it's from here you'll be doing the vast majority of your synthesizing. Using the ingredients you've gathered from around the world, you'll gradually unlock items in a skill tree which can then be made. Thankfully, for lazy people like me, There's the option to automate this process, and while there are a couple of minor drawbacks compared to manually doing this, generally I just found myself tapping the R button, choosing whether I wanted high or low quality, and letting the computer do its thing. You can then choose the three best traits that the ingredients have allowed, and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, the item shall be created. If you were previously daunted by some of the synthesis in other titles, I'd say Riser 2 is the most approachable that I've experienced so far. One niggle that I do have, though, are the descriptions given to the player. I don't know whether it's down to UI design or Or just expecting that the player knows what these things do, but more often than not, it felt like there was a bit of a lack of information in terms of the different things you're creating. A great early example of this was simply not knowing how to heal up. The game gives you a very brief tutorial, but the process of actually acquiring a health item is convoluted and a little bit confusing. You have to create these green beans, but once they're made, they instantly travel to the box which is in your atelier room. You then have to go into a sub menu, move down to a very specific area, And equip them to your character. This can only be done when you're in the room. As soon as you leave it, it feels like you haven't actually made anything. You return to the room and think, okay, I'm going to head to the box, take out the items manually, but you can't do that. It's a really odd choice. It would have been so much better if perhaps when you're in your room, you could just allow the player to add items to their character like you would in any other game. It's particularly frustrating if you've got a key quest item and you've headed out to the location only to find that you haven't got it on you. Even though you made it before you left, you Just forgot to manually equip it. As far as gripes go, that's essentially it for me. I want to look next at one of my favourite and most improved areas of the game, and that's the combat. In previous titles, they use the active turn based system, and while it worked well enough, It's not the most exciting. The new system is much more enjoyable. It takes on a more real time approach. Down in the corner, you'll see when you can make your next attack. You can string up to three physical hits together and switch your team into aggressive or defensive modes using the up and down on the D pad. All of this will be building up an AP gauge, which is shown down here. Essentially, what this does is allow you to perform special magical abilities as it goes above the predetermined limit for that skill. Performing your initial hits will raise it up, as will your team's moves, and then If you're quick enough, you can press a bumper button and activate one of your skills.
Now later in the game, these can then be chained in succession. Then you'll be looking out for your team's calls, which are shown on the left of the screen. They may ask you to deal specific magic damage, which comes in four different flavors, which if you execute in time will trigger the team move and essentially cause all the bells and whistles to go off. Like so, like so. Maintaining your attack upon your enemies can also stun them. This leaves them in a state of disarray, unable to do any moves in counter. But what was nice is this can also happen to you. The one area that I was really initially confused about was how healing and items work in the game. But it's all tied to this CC gauge, which is shown down here. Essentially, by performing those chain moves, combos, and increasing your overall multiplier, you gradually build your CC. It replaces something like mana and allows you to use your items with each one draining one of its points. What was a really smart choice was that your item usage is available much more readily than your action usage. This may all sound confusing, but it amounts to allowing the player moments to quickly use an item to save the day, rather than having to wait for your turn, knowing full well that the computer was going to attack you within that space of time you'd die and it would be back to square one. As you unlock more characters, you can quick switch, a bit like the Blaze Blue games, allowing you to build this multiplier, this combo, release one of the other players quickly and then do exactly the same. And if things get a little overwhelming, you can pause the action at any time. You can then look at the strengths and weaknesses of both your own characters as well as the enemy and plan out what you're going to do next. And in some of the tougher fights, you'll also want to switch to your other players. Why would you do this? Well, they may become the target of all the attacks and their blocking abilities aren't quite up to scratch. Blocking is done in real time. As an enemy attacks, if you can time it just right, you'll get the perfect block, which mitigates almost all of the damage. But even if you're a little bit slow, you'll still be able to reduce it. It keeps you on your toes, and it means that in the areas where you potentially wait in for your next attack or item use, you still have to keep an eye on the corners of the screen, as when an enemy attacks, it'll be shown with a red indicator. Overall, and I'm sure you can hear, the combat for me is such an improvement, and not just on the Riser series, on many of the JRPGs I've played in the past. It does something new and it does it really well. The other half of the gameplay is the exploration and gathering. Gathering seen a slight improvement with the ability to craft and create specific gathering tools such as scythes and these then allow you to unlock new areas and new ingredients. The exploratory tombs include a nifty little compass which will show you many of the memories that you need that then form the next half of the game. You'll need to find and unlock several memories which are indicated with a blue or orange glow. You'll then need to read these and place them in the correct slots within this area which will unlock the full memory. How you do this is by reading the clues on the right, scanning through the information that you're given for each one on the left and deducing and it's actually remarkably intuitive. It's not a case of simply looking at the words in bold and then matching them up, although sometimes that's the case. You'll be using your inference skills and it genuinely feels like you're trying to deduce the information and find out where it goes. Now, never fear, if you have no inference skills, you can simply just trial and error, trial and error, but it will take you ages and it won't be very fun. When you complete a sequence in one of these boxes, you'll be rewarded with a load of XP, sometimes a unique item upgrade or a specific skill that can only be acquired by doing so. You don't have to do all of these, but in terms of building the lore, it was an excellent system and felt like it wouldn't have been out of place in a new Batman game or something akin to that. For convenience, they've allowed the player to fast travel from wherever they are. You simply bring up the world map, choose a location, or sublocation, and with the press of a button, you'll be there within seconds. It's not unique to Riser 2, but it's done really well and the load times are excellent. Riser 2 just feels like a real improvement over the original, which was already a great game. This extends to Riser's movement, so you can still jump and sprint around with a auto sprint if you so choose, but throw in the ability to now climb, and the excellent diving mechanic which sees you spelunking below the waves, or using a magical rope whip to swing between vast drops, and it feels like Koei Tecmo really tried hard to make it a more immersive adventure. In terms of gameplay and controls then, Riser 2 is an excellent game, and one which doesn't rest on its laurels in terms of new gameplay mechanics throughout the tens of hours you're going to spend playing it. I give gameplay 18 out of 20, and the controls are equally good, they score 18 out of 20.
Visually, Atelier Riser 2 looks excellent. The bright and beautiful colours have returned from the original, and Riser herself is looking, uh, but the camera does have a tendency to travel on the low side. I can see why the developers have done it, but hmm. Yeah, and I did find the fact that you can run straight through NPCs a little bit odd. My kids thought my main character was a ghost. Performance wise, you're looking at 30 FPS almost all the time. There are a number of different weather effects and you'll be traveling throughout various different times of the day. Real time shadows are cast by your player and everything feels of a very high quality. Particular credit has to go to some of the load times. You'll see in handheld mode, it looks fantastic. I did notice a really minor issue with some cross hatched shadows, which seem to map them themselves at a certain time of the day on all of the textures, but you really have to get up close to the TV to notice. The world's designed nicely, the monsters look great, and so do all the characters. In terms of visuals and performance, I give it 18 out of 20. One of my favourite areas of the series has to be the audio. Straight away, it's worth noting that you cannot choose English voice actors. This is Japanese only, and you'll be reading the on-screen text. And if you're French, unfortunately, there's no on-screen text for you at the moment, but that is coming in a latter patch. As far as that soundtrack goes, it's upbeat and quirky, but never irritating. Things like the battle music, which you'll hear so often, don't grate on the player, and that's something I'm always very aware of. <laughs> While the majority of the characters are voice acted, there are the occasional moments where voice acting just ceases and it'll be text on screen only, and I guess that's probably my only audio gripe. Audio scored? Yeah, 18 out of 20. In terms of value then, well, I've put in 30 hours so far, and I don't think I'm near the very end of the game at all. You can go back to previously visited tombs to solve some more of those memory sequences and unlock new items, and there's loads of side activities and questing to be done. I don't mind paying a premium price for a game that feels premium, and Atelier Riser 2 certainly does that. Yes, you can pay a bit more and go for the Ultimate Packs or the Digital Deluxe Edition, which include quite a few nice extra things, but I'd say this is definitely one that you're going to want to own physically, but it has a reasonable download size of 6.2 gigs and obviously is fully Switch Lite compatible. Overall, in terms of value, then I think this is a great package. If you're in the market for a new game because you haven't got any to play, yes, none of us is it. You're all going to buy this even though you've got no space and you've already got 100 games in your backlog. But regardless, I give value 18 out of 20. <laughs> So there we have it. Despite a couple of irritations in terms of the UI design and earlier explanations to the player, Riser 2 manages to elevate itself through brilliant combat and a much improved feeling of exploration. It scores a switch up score of 90%. Let me know down in the comments, are you going to be picking this one up? Is it a game you've been interested in for a while? Did you enjoy the first game? And is it true what they say? <laughs> Do they save lives? Hmm, let's find out. <laughs> Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! I'm running out of time Every day goes by so fast And every moment counts Baby, I don't want to miss a thing under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Or hang out in hotel bars, driving somewhere in your car We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars Under the stars Baby,